All right, so hi everyone. Thank you for coming to hear about our fourth year design project. I'm Lindsay, this is Ioana, Roy is over here, and Farzi, our other group member, is manning our booth right now. Uh, so today, we're gonna talk to you about what our project is and the design process we went through to get to the prototype we have today. So back in third year, we were asked to come up with an idea for our fourth year design project. We started off and we had interest in a lot of different areas, but one thing that really appealed to all of us was the idea of energy saving products. So with that in mind, we started looking at existing products and one interesting thing we found was the idea of reflective roofs. So in Canada, you'll notice most roofs are black in color. This allows them to absorb sunlight and helps with heating, which is good for winter because in Canadian climates, we have a lot of cold months during the year. In other climates where they aren't so cold, they often have whiter reflective roofs. This helps reflect the sunlight and keeps the houses cooler. It helps save on energy costs quite a bit. There's a really big movement in the United States to shift towards these type of roofs. But when they're implemented in Canadian climates, the cost savings isn't as big because of the, all the cold months we have during the year here. So with that in mind, we wanted to come up with a product that would basically be, allow the roof to be black when it's cold and white when it's hot. And this would give the benefits of both a black roof and of a reflective white roof. So um, once we had that idea, we started looking into uh, ways to do this. And as we were doing that, we came across something uh, that MIT had done that was very similar. And they had used, um, their product did the same thing, but the way they had implemented it was as a, a polymer liquid in between two plastic tiles. And the polymer was transparent when it was cold, and as it heated up, a uh, polymer precipitated out, and it, so it turned white and reflective. And we thought this was really cool, a really great idea, but we didn't think it was the most practical solution. We thought we could do a little bit better, and so with that in mind, we decided to develop, develop a coating that would do the same thing, but was more easy to integrate with existing roofing materials. So after we had that idea, we moved into what our customer requirements would be. And these are the things that would basically be needed um, for our product to eventually be a feasible, uh, feasible product for the market. So the first thing we had was the thermal transition. And so for that, at a low temperatures, we basically wanted our film to be transparent so you could see the black roofing substrate underneath. And so here we specified a solar reflectance value of a 0 0.1, and that's basically the percentage of light that is reflected back by a material. And that value is uh, similar to what black roofs are. So that was our cold state uh, solar reflectance requirement. The next thing we did was define one for our warm temperature state. So we wanted our roof to appear white at our higher temperatures. We specified this temperature as uh, 60 degrees Celsius. And this was because uh, black roofs actually heat up quite a bit more than the outside air temperature by more than 30 degrees Celsius. So that's why our temperature was higher than the room temperature uh, change. So, um, and for that, we specified a solar reflectance value of 0 0.75, which is a really good reflectance value uh, that most reflective roofs have. So after our uh, first primary requirement, our second one was the ease of application. And we wanted to develop the product as a latex paint, so it would be easy to apply to a variety of roofing substrates. Finally, we had our cost requirement, um, and so we really wanted our product that would potentially be feasible, and you could actually market it and have it as a good product. So for that, we wanted our cost to be similar to what uh, existing roof coatings are, which is uh, 75 cents to $1.50 per foot squared. And so with that, uh, that corresponds to a payback period of less than uh, five years. And that was kind of our minimum requirement for cost. And so after we had found, uh, developed our primary requirements, we moved into our secondary requirements. And these were just things that would make a good film a good coating. And so, for example, we had UV and thermal stability, uh, water resistance, good durability, and adhesion. So once we knew what it is that we wanted to make, uh, we went right into the rest of the design process. So first we designed how we were going to make our coating. Uh, then we went through a verification process where we studied the physics of our device to see that we theoretically thought it should work. And then we moved into prototype synthesis, testing our prototype, repeating, making a new prototype until we made the prototype that we have today. So how does our coating work? It's actually a very simple system. It is a polymer film loaded with microparticles. And how does that make a transparent film in cold temperatures and a white film at hot temperatures? Well, it's all to do with the refractive index of the materials. So here we have a graph of the refractive index 
of our polymer. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's not the pointer. <laughs> My bad. Okay, there we go. So um, our polymer refractive index is the dotted line here, and our microparticle refractive index is the solid line. And you can see that the refractive indices of the two materials matches at low temperatures. So at low temperatures, our film has the same refractive index throughout, and light can't tell the difference between materials that have uh, the same refractive indices. So the film itself is transparent. At high temperatures, uh, the silica microparticle uh, refractive index stays roughly the same, but the PDMS refractive index, that's our polymer, uh, decreases significantly so that the two refractive indices are very different. And when you have uh, microparticles, uh, so a little bit larger than the wavelength of light, and they are a different refractive index than the medium around them, they're going to scatter the light. It's the same reason that milk is white, it's the same reason that the clouds are white. So it's a physical change, it's not a chemical change. Um, our film at low temperatures is transparent, and then here it's white because of the scattering of light off the microparticles. So why did we choose the materials that we did for our design? Uh, first of all, because of the good optical properties, the, the matching refractive indices at low temperatures, uh, which is what we wanted, and the divergence in refractive indices. So that was our primary uh, goal in mind. We also chose them because they're both inexpensive. Uh, PDMS uh, was the polymer we chose, and it is the uh, primary ingredient in silicone sealant for your bathtubs. Um, and silica um, is sand, but it's also available in uh, microparticle size uh, for the cosmetic industry to be used as a filler, so they're both already uh, readily available materials, and we wanted to make our uh, coating with cost in mind. And uh, lastly, um, they're both stable, uh, over all temperatures that your roof could possibly be, um, which is good because we want a thermally active roof coating, so it's going to go through a lot of thermal cycles. And um, silica and PDMS make a uh, durable film, uh, we found in our search, search of literature, which is important, again, for our roof coating. So our verification model, this is how, once we um, decided on our system, we wanted to verify uh, quantitatively that it would give us the reflectance uh, values we wanted. Um, we used me scattering theory, so me scattering is um, the scattering off uh, micron sized particles that I was talking about earlier. And it's already uh, well known uh, how that scattering works, you just solve Maxwell's equations. Um, and what you do is you say sunlight strikes a spherical particle um, and you can uh, calculate how much light is reflected and how much light is transmitted. We found an open source uh, software that did this for us, just found R and T from uh, the incident uh, light as a function of the particle size and the wavelength of light. Uh, we integrated over the entire solar spectrum. Um, oh, and it's also a, a function of the difference in refractive index between the particle itself and the medium outside, which is where our whole um, uh, product idea, it's a, how it works, is the refractive index difference between this and the, the polymer film. So using this open source software, we were able to find how much uh, light one sphere reflects. And then we just summed up the contribution of all the spheres in our film. So for that, we used the particle loading in our film and the film thickness to find how many particles we had. And therefore, we were able to get a total, a total solar reflectance of our film. So what we found is um, this graph right here is a, a, an example of uh, one set of parameters for our film that gave us the desired solar reflectance as a function of temperature. So temperature is at the bottom here, solar reflectance is on uh, this axis, and um, we put in a particle uh, radius of 1.75 microns, film thickness of 1.75 millimeters, and particle loading of 35 weight percent. We were able to see at approximately four degrees, it um, the solar reflectance was uh, theoretically zero, and at approximately 60 degrees, solar reflectance is somewhere around 0.75 or 8, which is exactly what we wanted. So we were able to theoretically verify that our film should give us the desired reflectance properties. Then we moved on uh, to prototype fabrication. So our first focus was to just make a film that um, would show the thermally dependent reflectance. Um, so, um, for PDMS, we used Silgard 184, which is um, a kit you can buy made by Dow Corning. It's very simple. You get the liquid PDMS and the liquid curing agent, and you mix them, and you make a solid polymer. So, uh, it, um, that was very uh, straightforward, and the silica microparticles 
um, were kindly donated to us by Tokuyama, and they were at 3.5 and 7 micrometers, which uh, fit the approximate range um, um, that we, through our verification process, found would give us the, the desired reflectance properties. Um, but also, I should mention, with the model, we found that um, there was a lot of um, wiggle room with the parameters. So if we chose uh, the, the silica particle size to be 3.5 micrometers, we could change the, um, we could slightly increase the film thickness or the particle loading, um, and we get the same reflectance properties as if we chose the particle size to be 7 mic uh, micrometers, then we could slightly decrease uh, the film thickness and uh, particle loading. So. Um, we could basically choose our parameters not only um, to satisfy the model, but also what we thought was a feasible far particle size or a feasible film thickness. Um, so we were able to get uh, these films. Um, after you uh, mix the PMS and the silica, uh, you, cure them, you can cure them on a hot plate um, for 35 minutes or at room temperature. Uh, for, it takes 48 hours. Um, and, and we did get the... the uh, films. And then we moved on to latex uh, formulation. So our second primary requirement was that we be able to um, make our coating in such a way that you can apply it easily to your roof. So our vision for that was that you would make a latex paint out of the PDMS and silica, paint it on your roof, and it would dry out and you would get our film. We were unsuccessful in getting a latex, so we could get the silicon PDMS to form an emulsion in water, and that, that is what a latex is, it's just a, an emulsion. Um, droplets of PDMS and silica suspended in water with surfactant. So we were able to get that, but we found that over time the silica always settled out. And in terms of um, trying to suspend silica particles, 3.5 and 7 microns is a very large particle size for that, so we think that that might be the, the problem behind it. Now we're looking into other um, easy ways of applying our coating that don't involve uh, latex application, and we're going to talk about that briefly later. So what were the results from our fabrication? As you can see here, we got a visual transition in, temp um, in reflectant or color with temperature. So on the left there, you can see our film at cool temperatures. It's clear, and you can see the black substrate behind it. As you increase the temperature, it starts to turn a little bit gray, and then at high temperatures, it looks pretty white. So that was the visual transition. On the right here, we have the reflectance values for that film. Uh, as you can see, there's a clear inc linear increase uh, in reflectance as temperature increases. <coughs> So uh, how does that compare to our primary customer requirements? So for our thermal transition, you may remember, uh, we had specified our transparent value at 0.1. Uh, we ended up getting, satisfying that requirement. We had reflectance values of 0.05 to 0.1 at 10 degrees Celsius, um, which is good because we actually be, were, performed better than that requirement. So there's a little bit of room to even decrease the transparency there and still have a film that reflects similar to what a black roof does. For our second one, our white state, we didn't quite meet our requirements. It was a 0.75 we had specified. Might have been a little ambitious, as that is basically what a white piece of paper, the solar reflectance is for that. Um, we ended up getting solar reflectance values of 0.2 to 0.35. Uh, however, this was at temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius um, due to equipment limitations when we were doing the measurements. If we were to actually measure at 60 degrees Celsius, which is what we had specified, we expect that it would have been up to about 0.4 to 0.5. Um, however, even with the reflectance values we have now, when we're looking at the cost analysis, um, the cost savings analysis for our prototype, we ended up finding that after a payback period, um, the cost savings for a typical house would still be about $50 to $100 per year. Um, and so if we actually met, um, if we improved the film and meet our solar reflectance values, that would be even higher, up to about a couple hundred dollars a year. And so that was our first requirement. Uh, our second re requirement was the ease of application. As Yuan was saying, we didn't manage to um, a create a latex paint of our material. However, we do think there are alternative applications that might be even better suited to our coating, such as a spray coating or even in incorporating the coating fabrication into the shingle manufacturing process. Finally, we have our low cost requirement. So our prototype ended up costing about $9.50 per square foot. Uh, when we looked at the scaled material costs for that, uh, we ended up finding it would probably be around 25 cents per square foot. 
which was pretty good because the reflective roof, roof coatings were again um, 75 cents to $1.50, so there's quite a bit of room there for additional manufacturing costs and a profit margin for companies if they're interested in selling this product. So after our primary requirements, we did quite a bit of testing on our secondary requirements. Uh, for these, we tried to use industry standards. We had to modify some of them just to, uh, due to time limitations and equipment limitations. Um, <coughs> but as you can see here, for water resistance, we uh, put the film in water and submerged it for 24 hours. We ended up finding a negligible, negligible mass change. The coating was actually very water repellent. If you put drops of water on it, they just bead right up. Um, and so it would work pretty well as a waterproof coating as well. After that, we looked at the durability. So for this, the industry standard is actually a pencil test where you take a pencil and try and scratch the film. We ended up getting a pencil hardness of F, which was two units above the specified value of 2B for acrylate paint coatings, uh, which are common outdoor paints. So we actually did pretty well in durability. For dry time, uh, we found that our coating was 48 hours at room temperature and 35 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius, which uh, depending on the um, and application method we choose seemed to be pretty good values. Next, we looked at UV stability. So for this, our test, we ended up just taking it outside and inside because we didn't have the equipment to do a full UV testing on it. Uh, we ended up seeing a 7% change in the reflectance values. However, we think most of this was just due to um, measurement error because the device we were using was a little bit older. And uh, because we did the tests on different days after the cycling, there's a little bit of a calibration issue between the measurements. Um, after that, we looked at thermal stability. So we took our film, we uh, dipped it in boiling water, 100 degrees Celsius, for 30 seconds, and dipped it in ice water for 30 seconds, uh, 100 times, and we ended up seeing no change after 100 cycles. So it held up pretty well to the thermal testing. Finally, we have adhesion. So we ended up getting an adhesion strength on a peel test of 66 newtons per meter. Uh, this was on the aluminum substrate. Our film actually sticks a lot better to shingles, but this was just what we were doing our testing on due to the equipment we had again. Right, so take a moment to highlight our successes. Uh, first and foremost, we have a successful prototype, which is awesome. You should come to the booth and see a demonstration. Uh, so we were able to see the thermal transition in temperature that we wanted to see. Um, our coating also has a lot of desirable roof coating properties, which is one of the uh, most important things when we set out doing this project. We wanted our product to be feasible uh, for it to be a roof coating. And it's also cost effective. So we really think there's a market potential for our product. And of course, this was only the first iteration of our design, so there's uh, some future work to be done. And we've just highlighted um, three um, areas we want to focus on first. We want to increase the reflectance at higher temperatures. As we mentioned, we are below our, uh, our sorry, primary requirement in that regard. We want to reconsider the latex formulation, and Lindsay talked a bit about that. And we also want to improve adhesion. So we found that adhesion to shingles uh, did not show any problems, but when we uh, put our film on a flat substrate, uh, sometimes it would peel off. So that's also something we want to work on, and we have a few ideas of where to go with that. So I'd like to uh, conclude our presentation by uh, thanking these people, in particular our, consult our consultant, Professor Duhamel, who is here today. Uh, he was always there to advise us and kindly let us use his lab which is great. And uh, everyone else uh, we listed here who helped with um, uh, my Collins for uh, letting us do testing free of charge in Tokoyama for donating particles. And Professor Haney Aziz for putting it together. <laughs> Thanks. Questions? Which wavelengths? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so the solar reflectance machine that they've got in the solar lab it does a four-point measurement at four different um, uh, wavelengths. They're spread out throughout the solar spectrum. And then based on that, they average it to fit the actual solar spectrum that we see on the face or like near the surface of the planet. OK, I see. Yeah. So you're assuming it's a diffuse scattering. Yeah. There's no absorption at all. 
We, we assume no absorption for the materials at the, the solar wave lengths, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it depended on the film we had. We had different variations of film. For our highest one, of, we had a 0 0.35 at 40 degrees Celsius. We expect it would be about 0 0.4. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it would be yeah. around there, so yeah. around 0.4. <laughs> Yeah, so eventually it would. On the prototype we have now, actually when we cool it to 25 degrees Celsius, it looks very, very clear. Um, so if it were to go much more than that, it probably would eventually turn white. Uh, at that point, you'll probably have a lot of snow on your roof. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, eventually that would be an issue. Yeah, kind of, but uh, so at an air temperature of uh, 21 degrees Celsius, you expect it, uh, the roof to be more than 30 degrees above. Typically, that was the value we had found from uh, various sources when we were looking. So that's why we picked the 40 to 60 degrees as our point, because we think that should correspond to a roof temperature. Obviously, we need to test it more with our actual film, but we haven't had the chance to do that yet. And it's Thanks.